Welcome everybody to the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. I am your quiz master blaster, Davo. <laughs> <laughs> master blaster? Really? That's where sure. I went. Yeah. It, right, it, why not? Yeah, I mean, it's 1986 somewhere. Oh, it's in my heart. <laughs> With me, as always, is the usual suspects. We got Neil. Hello, everybody. And we got Kells. Hello. Really enjoyed last week with uh, with Nathan. I thought that was really fun. I think guests are good. It depends on the guest, but well, Andy has said he wants to come back. He was uh, ashamed of us, <laughs> Kells and I in particular, that we didn't get Pavlov right in the in the previous episodes. Remember the Pavlov question, Kells? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I can yeah. understand his, his his disappointment in us. We used to talk about him so much. Andy was telling me today that he, uh, or the other day, that he was screaming in his car, Pavlov, it's Pavlov! <laughs> and and we just didn't get it. And he was ashamed of us. He hung his head in traffic. Oh, that's dangerous. I know, I know. He does, risked his life for the podcast. <laughs> does he recognize that when he's listening to it, we've already done it? So yelling <laughs> isn't, yelling isn't really going to help much? I tried to explain that to him, but he lives for the podcast, and he's, you know, yeah. we're larger than life. Well, some of <laughs> us are, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's about time for me to read some questions. But, I'd like to say thank you to everybody out there listening. I'd like to ask them humbly to go out there and give us a review on iTunes. Just really, we're, we need some participation. You know, we need, you know, we can just trivialize all day if we want to, but we want you guys out there to help out. And the more you talk about us online and tweet at us and all that stuff, the bigger we get and we need to be bigger. Wouldn't you agree? I concur. Excellent. So review us, tweet at us. We're here. We're waiting. Today is a special day because I haven't read questions in a, in a hot minute. So I was sitting around, you know, Casa de Devo, thinking, I need to read some questions. I need to challenge my friends, my fellow brain ladlers. What could I challenge them with? You know what my answer was? I'm about to find out. Yeah, it. I'm pretty sure I'm about to find out. The answer is fish. So this week, I'm going to ask you all kinds of questions about fish. Is there going to be anything about fish tacos in there? There will not, because I don't want you to harken back to our previous bestseller, the taco <laughs> episode. <laughs> so this, this isn't a part of the same universe? This isn't a, a sequel? No. Oh, oh. I will allude to fish cuisine, but there no. will be no fish tacos in this episode, as no. delicious as fish tacos are. So are you gentlemen ready for some fish? Always. Yes. Well, we're going to start with the basics. So question one, what makes a fish a fish? And this isn't a philosophy question. There are five characteristics that all fish, with very few exceptions, share. For two points each, name these characteristics. And when I say characteristics, I am specifically talking about physiology. As if you tell me that a fish swims, I'm going to agree but tell you that's not what I'm looking for. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm trying to help. I'll erase that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm locked in with something. Awesome. Neil? I've got four that I'm not terribly confident in. Oh, neither am I, Neil. We can be not confident together. Every time I think of something, I can think of a fish that has an exception to that. Well, I will throw out a trivia nugget after I give you the answers. That will explain why. Uh, I guess I'll lock in with four. I can't think of a fifth one. Well, Neil, what do you got? Well, I'm pretty sure they all have gills. You are correct. Um, most of them at least have scales. Although I don't know that they all do. Like, I don't think sharks have scales. Um, they all have fins. 
I think that their blood is copper based rather than iron based. And that's all I got. I'll give you credit for three. They all have gills, they all have fins, and they all have scales. For the most part. There's always exceptions to the rule, and I'll explain in a moment. Kells? Well, I also have that they they have gills. They're mm-hmm. bony. Scales. Mm-hmm. Dorsal fin, tail fin. Uh Dorsal fin and tail fin basically are one answer. Man, I figure I tried to stretch it fins. out. Fins. We'll give you fins. I'll take fins. We'll give you fins. We'll give you gills. Did you say scales? Yes. Bony and mm-hmm. have scales. We'll give you... The, so you got three correct as well. I'll take it. Um, they are cold-blooded. You know, I wrote that down and then... And then um, Deleted it. Um, they have swim bladders, which keep them buoyant, mm. except for sharks who have to continuously swim. That sort of thing. You know what I mean? Right. right. And there is also a sixth one. The scales is a tough one because scales, I will get into scales later. I want to give you credit for scales. But fish have a specialized sense organ called the lateral line. And it runs along the length of their body, and that's how they can de- they can detect vibrations and movement in the water. So if there's no light, they can detect food and predators. This is what the lateral line you say. That is the lateral line. Hmm. I've learned something today. See, that's the goal of brain ladle trivia. We're all winners tonight, then. So three, <laughs> uh, so six points for each of you. Good job, guys. Question two. Fish lay eggs, but as with everything, there are exceptions. By percentage, how many fish give birth to to live young? Is it 1%, 2%, 4%, or 6%? I'm locked in. I'm locked in. All right, Kells. Uh, I went with 2%. Neil? I went with C. 4%. Well, it's my favorite kind of milk, and it's the right answer. 2%. Good job, Kels. Thank you, sir. Question number three. Almost all fish have scales, as we spoke of. What are the function of scales? So there are four answers that I'm looking for. So I'll give you five points for two of them, and ten for all four. Um, I don't have four, but I'm locked in. Okay. Kels? All right, I am locked in also. All right, Kels, what do you got? Well, I went with, uh, it help regulate body temperature, uh, aid in defense, and aid in breeding, in breathing. Did you say breeding or breathing? Breathing. You got one right. <laughs> that ain't good enough. That's not good enough. It's got one right. I appreciate that. Neil? Well, if they didn't have scales, then their innards would be outside. So they protect the uh, the insides. I can imagine that they're... What? Why, why is that funny? Uh, their innards would be out of their body. Well, yours Just, would be too. It, it would. Without your it skin. Would. I need my scales to protect my innards. <laughs> I've been living so in Arkansas protection. too long. Yeah, yeah protection. No um, okay. S- streamlining, the, the way they kind of interlink with each other, I can imagine would help them uh, swim more efficiently. Um, Very good. I know that I know that some fish are kind of slimy, so I'm guessing that the scales might have some like glandular function to excrete stuff that's good for them. And uh, I don't think they sweat exactly, but um, I could see that a protective slimy coating might be helpful. And my fourth answer is blank. Is blank? Yeah, I didn't have a fourth. Well, one. you got two correct. And you got the one that I thought was most challenging. Uh, scales protect 
they provide something called hydrodynamic resistance reduction, which is a fancy way of saying it streamlines them for swimming, which is what you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, coloration, you know, providing dappled patterns and such, and reflection. Scales, certain, you know, you've seen fish that are very silvery. Mm-hmm. Well, those scales provide reflection, which helps them see. They're like photonic cells. They're reflective. And to answer your mucus question, most fish are covered with mucus anyway. So scales have nothing to do with that. Well, where is Where are the mucus glands? Under the scales. Hmm. Yeah, see? The more you So five points for Neil. Da, 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 da. <laughs> well played, Neil. That was more like Intel, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, so question. Did Kels, get, did Kels get any? Kels did not get anything. Okay. I got news. That is what we call a goose egg or a fish egg for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll see myself to the door. <laughs> 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 Question. Take David with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a big hook that came out of the out of the side of the room here and almost pulled me off stage. So, question four in basic fish knowledge. So you have freshwater fish, and you have saltwater fish. So, what makes a freshwater fish a freshwater fish, and what makes a saltwater fish a saltwater fish? Or to put it another way. Why are some fish saltwater and some fish freshwater? I'm locked in. I'm also locked in. Neil, what do you got? Well, I, I really don't have much of an idea. I just, I know the difference between freshwater and saltwater would mostly be the salt. So I would imagine that saltwater fish are better at handling salt than freshwater fish are, metabolizing it or or. or or breathing it, or whatever they do to it. Okay. Kells? I just went with um, saltwater fish live in the ocean. Freshwater fish do not. Well, I'm going to give it to Neil, because the difference is, it's true that the main difference is one lives in freshwater and one lives in saltwater, but it is how they process the salts. It's There's no real anatomical difference. It's more of a cellular difference. So when you regulate mm. the way that these fish regulate water and salt in their cells, they maintain the same kind of salt concentration in their body, but one saltwater fish pump out more fit salt to so they can stay in equilibrium than fish freshwater fish do because of their environment. That sounded so Neil's That sounded very sciencey day though. I know, I have a science category in here. So I'm proud of you. Thank you. So 10 points for Neil. And around one, we've got some odd scores. I've got Kells with 16 and Neil with 21. I love these odd scores. scores. I love them. I mean, technically Kells is even, but it's unusual. Oh, man. (laughs) And the fun just left the room. (laughs) That's what I'm known for. (laughs) Category two. I know I was impressing you with all my science stuff, but we're right back to music. Oh. So category two, I will name a song. You name the fishy band that sang the song. Okay? Okay. The song title is Uh, Hold My Hand. I know I was doomed in this category because I know one group with a fish name. (laughs) So they might be popping up a lot. Okay. Yeah, I know two. As long as it's cool, man. I know two. I can think of two. So I'm just going to go with the one I know. I'm locked in. There are so many. There are so many. Did you lock in? Now? I'm locked in. Oh, well. yeah. I'm locked in, too. All right, Kells. What's your band? I just want a hoodie and a blowfish. Neil, what's your band? I don't like hoodie, but oh, those blowfish. <laughs> That's from something, isn't it? Did I just make that up? Yeah, yeah, no, you didn't. I don't know what that's from, but <laughs> the correct answer is Hootie and the Blowfish. Ten points all around. Song number two, the title of the song is The Vietnam Song. What? 
that note of incredulity in your voice, Kel, says you want a hint. I think I'm locked it in. It won't help, but I'll take it. You're locked in? No hints then. Neil locked in. I'm locked in. What's up? Well, let's go with Neil first then. Yeah, this is the other band that I know that has Fish in the title <laughs> is the band Fish. So that's what I went with. Fish with a PH? Yes. Okay. Kells, what do you got? I just wrote down the Stingrays. The correct answer is Country Joe and the Fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this song that. Was, he played that, a, yeah, it was, he played it that was, at Woodstock. He did. It was a bit of really their only noteworthy hit, but it was huge in Vietnam. Is that the song, Is that the I Don't Want to Die song? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Yeah. The song title for number three is Don't Fear the Reaper. Locked in. Oh, I'm I'm locked in for that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh in unison, one, two, three. Blue Oyster the Cult. Blue Oyster Cult. Perfect, guys. Blue Oyster Cult, ten points apiece. I don't think oysters are fish, though. They are aquatic, and there's only so many fish things you can find. <laughs> you just said there were tons of fish fans. There, there were, but the, I'm trying to, to do you guys a favor and find ones that aren't like the barracudas. I appreciate it. <laughs> Final question in music. The song title is Once Bitten, Twice Shy. So I thought I knew who that was, but I don't <laughs> see the fish connection, so I must have it wrong. Oh, I did have the wrong band. It's not poison. No, it is not. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay, what did you? What, I I feel a moment of clarity hit Neil. What have you got? No, I was just I was going through all the hair bands that I could think of, and finally <laughs> realized it was Great White, and that makes sense now. <laughs> Kells, what did you get? I just wrote down fish. The correct answer is Great White. Neil, our scores, please. Kells has 36 and Neil has 51. Okay. Still anybody's game? You know, everybody likes to look at fish in a tank. I like to look at fish on a plate. So this next category is cuisine. Question one. This Japanese delicacy consists of very fresh raw fish served with soy sauce and no rice. Locked in. Locked in. Kells? Sushi? Neil. Sashimi. The correct answer is sashimi. Sushi comes with rice. Sashimi does not. I eat neither. You're missing out, man. A nice tuna sashimi? Mmm. Well, maybe this one will tickle your taste buds. Question two. This French dish consists of a creamy mixture of cooked lobster meat, egg yolks, and brandy, often cognac, stuffed into a lobster shell. It can also be served with an oven brown cheese crust, typically Gruyere. The sauce that accompanies this must contain mustard. What is this lobster dish? Locked in. I have no idea. No idea. Well, does it sound tasty? You're punting? Nah. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, does it sound good, though? I'm not a big fan of lobster. Neither am I. I feel like I should be, but I'm not. I think it's got a weird texture. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what that's what throws me. So you punted. So Neil, what is this lobster dish? Well, I don't know, but the only fancy lobster dish I know of is called lobster thermidor, but I have no idea what's in it. Well, now you know because the correct answer is lobster thermidor. So when you go to your fancy restaurants, you can ask for lobster thermidor and see if they get it for you. I will, because that sounds delicious to me. You like lobster, then? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, question number three. Speaking of lobster, Maine is known for its lobster. Maryland is known for what delicious sea creature? Locked in. And for two bonus points, tell me the exact type. My friend Jeff would kill me if I missed this one. He talks about it all the time. <laughs> Shout out to Jeff. I wrote something down. What did you write down? I just wrote crab. Okay. Neil? It's blue crab. So 10 points for Kells and 12 points for Neil. 
I would have accepted crab. You got the right cr- kind of crab, Neil. Congratulations. <laughs> its scientific name is uh, Calanectus sapidus, which means beautiful swimmer that is savory. <laughs> How appropriate. I've, I've heard that described about myself. By... Passers by. I'm, I <laughs> cut through the water like a dolphin. <laughs> it's the savory part that I have a hard time yeah, with. That's so... Well, you know. Yeah. Hey, question four. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Fish and chips is delicious, right? It's cool. Sure. I love fish and chips. What type of fish is most commonly used for the fish part? Locked because in. the potato fish is used for the chips. I'm locked in. <laughs> I'm locked in. What do you got, Kels? Kneel before cod. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Neil? I also got cod. <laughs> the correct answer is cod. <laughs> <laughs> what are the scores, please? <laughs> well, I'm pulling away a little bit. It's 56 for Kels and 93 for Neil. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Marimba. <laughs> Apparently, I know my fish cuisine because I was perfect in that round. Yeah, you do know bonus. your fishy cuisine. Bonus. I, I like fishy or I, cuisine. Or I'm able to guess well at my fishy cuisine is more likely. Oh, that's <laughs> that's part of the trivia thing. <laughs> Our next category, since we're talking about fish, we're going to talk about how to catch fish. This next <laughs> category is all about fishing. Question one. What is noodling? Locked in. Uh, also locked in. For this one, I'm going to need you to be f- fairly precise. So let's see what your answers are. Okay. Neil, what have you got? I can be more precise than this if you need me to, but I believe it's basically catching catfish with your hands. Okay. That's very by precise. Sti- by sticking your hand in its mouth, I think. Mm-hmm. Kells? I had no idea. I just um, wrote down act of putting a worm on a hook. You know, Neil is correct. Oh. Noodling is sticking your arm in the water and hoping a catfish bites it and pulling the catfish up with your hand. I do like the visual of Kel's answer, though. I do, too. I mean, <laughs> they're usually moving. It's like noodles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, catfish are, you know, bottom-dwelling fish, and if you know where they're hanging out, you can stick your arm in there and wiggle your fingers around, and they'll try to bite. Hmm. And their head is so wide, you can kind of hook your arm, if they're big enough, you can hook your, you know, your hand and your arm up through their gill and drag them out. Wow. It's crazy to watch. Absolutely crazy. Question number two. What is the name of the professional angler organization that hosts tournaments around the country? You may have seen them on ESPN. You may have seen them with their heavily sponsored jerseys a la NASCAR fishing out there. There is a professional f- angler association. What is that? What is it called? I'm just guessing here, but I'm locked in. Yeah, I... I'll guess something, but it's not right. Oh, keep your chin up, man. You might get good. Neil, what have you got? Uh, I just said the Pro Bass Tour. You're very close. I know it's got bass in it, right? It does have bass in it. Oh, the, the Bass Pro League? In order to be on this tour, you have to be a Bassmaster. Oh. It is the Bassmaster Series. No. So close. I'm going to give each of you five points because it's all about that bass. <laughs> no trouble. <laughs> Thank you for going on that little walk with me. I got you, man. Don't worry. So question number three. What is the fly in fly fishing? I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I just guessed. I have no idea. Cat. Oh, Kels, come on. Let's see if he gets guessed well. <laughs> well so fun. Uh, I guess it was the type of lure that they used. Okay. Neil? Yeah, I, 
that's what I said also, but I also I put lure slash feathers because I think they're usually made out of feathers. Uh, they are typically made out of feathers or other things, but it is you were both correct. They are a special kind of lure. It resemble they resemble uh, natural invertebrates, bait fish, other food organisms, or actual shiny lures to provoke the fish to striking at it. So lure is correct. Ten points for each of you. I have mentioned to you fly fishing, noodling. Those are types of, those are techniques to catch fish, right? I want you to name three additional fishing techniques. There are ways people have caught fish throughout time and space and the universe and everything. Well, probably not the universe, but you know what I mean. Okay, I've got three. I'm locked in. Kells, what have you got for your answer to question four? Okay, I went with uh, spear fishing, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the use of a net, and cane mm-hmm. fishing. What is cane fishing? Using a cane pole. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Neil, what have you got? I went with uh, net, bow and arrow, and traps. Well, you both got the final question right in fishing. So, Neil, what are the scores? I've got 81 for Kells and 128 for Neil. Oh. I am recording now. Okay. Category 5, gentlemen. Movies that aren't Finding Nemo or Jaws. Question 1. Name the 1964 film starring Don Knotts, in which he turns into a fish and helped the not- the Navy... Pardon me, the Navy. Locate and sink Nazi U boats in mid 1941. I have an answer. Are you locked in, my friend? Yes, I am. I'm locked in. Neil, what have you got? I don't remember. I know he did a movie that was called something like The Incredible Mr. Fish, but that's. I don't think it's fish. Mm, you're so close. Oh, now I know what it is. Ooh, and this is not what I wrote. <laughs> well, what did you write then? <laughs> I wrote the Andy Griffith Show Goes to the Beach, but I think it's, um, <laughs> is it Incredible Mr. Plinkett? No, it's the Incredible Mr. Limpet. Mr. Limpet, I know some, yeah, okay, yeah. It's the incredible Mr. Limpet. Dang it, you guys were so close. (laughs) Well, Neil was, I I go for (laughs) comedy. He started the ball. (laughs) The 2013 documentary that addressed the controversial practice of keeping killer whales captive at SeaWorld. Locked in. I'm locked in. Kells, what have you got? A blackfish. Neil, what have you got? I never saw it, but I I remember seeing it on Netflix or someplace, and I thought it was blackfish. The correct answer is blackfish. Good job, guys. Fish movie question number three, and it's not Jaws or Finding Nemo. I'll just tell you that for free. (laughs) 1992 film. Featuring the story of two sons of a stern minister, one reserved and one rebellious, growing up in rural Montana while devoted to fly fishing. Locked in. I'm punting. I can't. I don't know. This movie was like on TNT 75 times a week. It. I, I think I've seen it 15 times I, by accident. I, I've never seen it. And I'm not sure I got it right because... I get this mixed up with another movie I think came out around the same time, but I'm not sure. But I do have that. I'm punting. You punted. Excellent. Well, not excellent. I'm sad to see it. Kells, what have you got? I went with A River Runs Through It. The correct answer is A River Runs Through It. It was a very, very good movie. But I've overwatched it through no fault of my own. That's not true. Are you ready for question four? Yes. Yes. 2008 Studio Ghibli film about a five-year-old boy that develops a relationship with a young goldfish princess 
who longs to become a human after falling in love with him. Locked in. I don't know any movies by Studio Ghibli, so I'm going to punt on this one too. Uh, you're only allowed one punt a game, so what you have to do now is hang your head in shame. <laughs> I, I'm fine with that, if it means I don't have to watch any anime. Oh my gosh, you, you infidel. <laughs> this is a glorious movie. Kells, what do you have? Uh, I wrote down Ponyo. Ponyo is the correct answer. Also another movie that I have Such not seen. Such a good movie. It's so good. It's really, really good. All the I love, I'm a Miyazaki fanatic. Yeah, it's on my list of things to watch. Uh well, you need to move it up the list because it's good. <laughs> well, there's there's room for all kinds of weird people in the world. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> well, at the end of uh, at the end of round five, Neil, Neil the hater. <laughs> what are the scores? I don't hate. I just dislike. There's a difference. What? <laughs> I don't, my my dislike isn't intense enough to be considered hate. Fair enough. Yeah, he wouldn't make the player hate us. But Kells made up. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Kells made up some ground in that movie in that category because I don't do movies very well. So scores right now are one eleven to one thirty eight. Ooh. Oh. These are weird scores. I love them, <laughs> but very good, very good game going into round six. Round six, stuff we get from fish. Oh boy! Now this is stuff we get from fish that we don't necessarily eat. There, you can almost call it the fish byproduct category, but that doesn't sound as fun as stuff we get from fish. No, it doesn't. Fish oil supplements contain omega three fatty acids which come from certain types of very oily fish and has been credited with numerous health benefits. What does omega-3 actually do in the human body? I'm not sure what you're getting at, but I have an answer. Um, um. I can expound on that if you would like. Omega-3 fatty acids have been credited with a lot of different health benefits that they don't necessarily actually do you know, things like um, they're good for your heart. They're good for a bunch of other kinds of almost snake oily, not to make a pun, sort of things. Mm -hmm. Scientifically, what does omega-3 do in the human body? What does it affect that causes a kind of a chain reaction of other benefits? Okay, I have an answer. I'm locked in. So I'm locked in. Well, you sound so hesitant. I've got to hear what you have to say. It seems like they can affect your triglycerides or something. Mm -hmm. They lower. Okay. They, I think they lower that in triglycerides. You need to be low, I think. But that's okay. All I got. Kills. What have you got? I went with um. They help improve blood flow by lowering cholesterol. You know, I'm going to give you each five points because that's not exactly the base thing that it does, but those are things that it is credited with fixing. Ah. The sign. The base thing that omega three fatty acids do is they affect your metabolism. Uh. Animals and fish need it to grow. But when you take extra supplements of it, it, by increasing your metabolism, it does those other things. Hmm. So I will give you each five points. I will take five points. Okay. Will you take five points, Neil? I have taken them already. <laughs> Ooh. Question two in Stuff We Get From Fish. What is the substance used to make perfume that is found in the intestines of sperm whales? Locked in. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't recall if you've punted this 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 game, Kells. I did. I think you in did. Inquisit. Okay. Do you want to hang your head in shame? No, I'm gonna. You know, you know me. I'll I'll write something. I locked in. 
Okay, Neil. It sounds like you know what this is. So why don't you enlighten us? Well, I mean, I'm I'm answering under protest because once again, sperm whales aren't fish. But <laughs> I believe the answer we're looking for is ambergris or ambergris. Okay, Kells. Well, although I've seen that episode of Bob's Burgers, um. I couldn't remember where ambergris came from, so I wrote down <laughs> eau de toilette. Funny <laughs> enough, ambergris was used to make eau de toilette. <laughs> so, in a weird bet, where weird way, you're right, but you get no points anyway. Oh, that's cold blooded. <laughs> <laughs> So our trivia nugget about ambergris, or ambergris, either way, is it is a solid, waxy, flammable substance of a dull gray or blackish color produced in the digestive system of sperm whales. And by the way, Neil, your protest is noted. <laughs> Freshly produced ambergris has a marine fecal odor. However, it acquires a sweet, earthy scent as it ages commonly likened to the fragrance of rubbing alcohol without the vaporous chemical astringency. Uh, we no longer use ambergris for perfume. We use a substance called ambroxan, which is a synthetic form of this ambergris. Now, in addition to all of that interesting trivia nugget, dogs are known to be attracted to the smell and they would sometimes be used to search for it as it washed up on beaches much like hogs with truffles all right all right i've grown today the maori people of new zealand traditionally used parts of fish in their weaponry like shark tooth, tooth clubs and spears tipped with stingray quills Whalebone, and yes, I anticipate a protest. Mm -hmm. Whalebone is used to craft a quarterstaff type weapon called a what? I've got no idea. I will hang my head in shame again, mm -hmm. although I'm not ashamed of not knowing traditional Maori weapons. Yeah. You know, you punted, you hung your head in shame. The third level <laughs> is just put your nose on the carpet, <laughs> just get in there. We're going to rub your nose in your lack of trivia knowledge. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll answer so I don't have to do the nose thing. <laughs> Let's see. You may be surprised. No. <laughs> and the reason I know this is because my son truly loves a television show called Deadliest Warrior. Uh, and they had a Maori episode of this television show. And I know so much more about weapons than I ever wanted to because my son loves this show so much. But I found this very fascinating and it fit perfectly with my fishy category. So what are your answers, fellas? Yeah, I have no idea also. Um, Neil, would you like to go first? I said a club. Mm. Solid. I wrote down Kringle McKringleberry. <laughs> well, to all of our listeners in New Zealand, I apologize. The correct answer is a Tayaha. Oh, yeah. This, the Tayaha. <laughs> this weapon was also made of wood, and it functioned like a quarterstaff and a sword. It was a very interesting weapon. Sounds like it could do some real damage. It can mess you up. Final question before the ultra mega round of doom. <laughs> what is Mother of Pearl? I'm locked in. Locked in. Kells, what have you got? I wrote down oyster lining. Oyster lining. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't mm. think of anything else. Oyster lining. <laughs> Neil, what do you have? I think it's the inside of oyster shells. 
The correct answer is oyster lining. As strange as that answer was. (laughs) It is the smooth, shining, iridescent substance forming the inner layer of the shell of some mollusks, especially oysters and abalones, and it is used for ornamentation. By the oysters? Really? Yeah. (laughs) You know, and by us, to make things look shiny and pretty. When they crack open their shells and they sing, they like to have a nice shiny upper palate. Huh. It, it there's, shows there's up so, very you well. You both got that order. right. There's a whole world of yeah. oysters that I didn't know about, I guess. I didn't I'm know they had you. like little, little it's oyster. It's a magical place under the sea. little oyster uh, <laughs> choruses or anything down there. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the end of round six. Neil, what are the, f- the scores, the final scores before you dive deep into the underwater depths of the Marianas Trench of fish knowledge? And ultimate score <laughs> is 126 for Kells and 163 for Neil. Hey, Zeus. <sighs> okay. Your final question. It is a lightning round based on the format of Two Truths and a Lie. There are an estimated 27,977 species of fish. I am going to read you three fish names of species. Two of them are real fish, one of them is not. You will get ten sets of three. If you get six out of ten correct, you win your points. That you wager on the Marianas Trench question of doom. Okay. Okay. I think I follow that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Kels, are you with me? I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm putting down deep in the Marianas Trench. Stick with the theme. <laughs> okay. Are you gentlemen That's... ready? Now, this is lightning round. I'm going to go fast. Okay. You're just going to go through this. You're Red just going to go through those sets, and we're going to answer. And then you're going to come... Uh, I'm going to go through the sets. and you. I'll go through each set. You tell me when you've written your answer. Then I'll go to the next one. But we're going okay. fast. I, I haven't okay. actually decided on my bet yet. Yeah. Continue that process. I got excited. <laughs> Just... I apologize my, for my haste. Seahorses? <laughs> oh, yeah! Now nah, he's a nah, he's good spirit. Like that. How many points did I have, Neil? You have 126. Okay. My wager is locked in. Let's put you 37 points behind me. Okay. All right. I am ready. Are we locked yes. in, gentlemen? Yeah, locked in. We are starting now. Redfish, bluefish, purple fish. We're answering the one that's not a real fish, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Sunfish, starfish, skyfish. Clownfish, camelfish, lionfish. Okay. Tiger shark, leopard shark, panther shark. Okay. Sheep's head, dog's head, snake's head. Donkey seahorse, hedgehog seahorse, giraffe seahorse. Okay. Dwarf fish, gnome fish, goblin fish. Okay. Duck fish, goose fish, rooster fish.
wormfish, snailfish, slugfish. Trout cod, trout perch, trout bass. All right, gentlemen. I said fish so many times, it literally lost all meaning. <laughs> I forgot how it was spelled. The word doesn't look right. But I have the answers prepared. Okay. Two truths and a lie. The answers are as follows. Purple fish is not a fish. Okay. Skyfish is not a fish. I got that one. Camelfish is not a fish. I got that one. Panther shark is not a shark. I got that one. Dog's head is not a fish. I didn't get that. A donkey seahorse is a product of my deranged imagination. <laughs> uh, I figured you would be deranged enough to have a hedgehog fish. Or yeah, that's, no, that's just thinking. life. <laughs> Dwarf fish is not a fish. I got that one. Okay. Duck fish is not a fish. I got that one. Slug fish is not a fish. You can get that one. Trout bass. Kells, what are your, how many did you get right? Only got five. Neil, how many did you get right? I got six correct. Ooh. Neil is correct, has received his points. Neil, how many did you bet, did you wager? I wagered zero points. Zero points. Which leaves your total as? 163. Kells. I you did, unfortunately did not get it correct. Yeah. How many points did you wager? 38. Well, it looks like Neil is our winner this week. Yay. Curses. Let's do How do you feel about learning so much about fish? Um, I feel good about that, I guess. Super enlightened. I still don't like fish very much, though. Oh, well, fish is delicious. Mm -hmm. And it's a critical part of our world. Over half the vertebrate species on the planet are fish. Cool. And yes, I will acknowledge your protest that I used certain aquatic mammals. <laughs> well, that was a rousing episode of fish knowledge. On behalf of everyone here at the Brain Ladle team... We have Neil, we have Kells. Neil was our big winner this week. Congratulations. We have a Patreon that we are humbly asking for your support in this endeavor of ours here at Brain Ladle Productions. We would love to have your support to make the best podcasts we can. We want to do so many different shows and so many different kinds of shows. We want to get things working as best, as well as we can. Pardon me. We want to make such good content. We have so many ideas here at Brain Ladle. That's what the ladle does. Scrapes up all those good brain bits at the bottom. We are on Patreon. We are on iTunes. Please review us on iTunes. That helps push our podcast up those charts so that when you're looking for us, you can find us a bit easier. We are on Spotify. We are on Google Play, which should, and here's a term, a cool term, aggregate out to your favorite podcast app. We are on Twitter, at LadleBrain. And yes, that's because I input our name incorrectly the very first time we tried. If you want to tweet at us, please do. We would love to have your input for questions, for topics we can talk about. Anything you want to send to us, please do. We have our email addresses. We have our website at brainladle.com. Uh, pardon me, brainladletrivia.com. We have we are on Facebook. Connect with us there, Brett Brain Ladle Productions. We're out there. We want to get bigger. We want to get better. We want to get more awesomer. Please give us a listen. 
Thank you for enjoying this show, and we will catch you next week. Hey, I look like a sexy, sexy rooster when I'm bobbing my head up and down.